Don't do that. Don't ever do that. Now, it's the way how you properly do exception handling. Hello, in this video, I'll show you how you can handle proper exceptions when you are dealing with the reframe or project. And I'm gonna debust a few myths that uh, I don't need to consider exception handling because the reframework has already built in. So let's get started. So for this part, I do have an empty project. This is a reframework where I have just copied my uh, component here. It's the get temperature. And what I'd like to show you is how you can handle proper exception even if we are dealing with custom components. Great, so what I'd like to do is to have the reframework to execute this get temperature, to display it on the screen and then to stop. And because I don't want to scrape any data, uh, I need to do some changes to the reframework. So the first thing is I need to make sure that the data it's reaching the state machine and the component which is responsible for this is this get transaction data. So I'm gonna do something like, uh, I'm just gonna delete this get transaction data. I'm gonna still leave a queue item uh, my focus is not here. So I'm gonna say something if the transaction number, which is in transaction number, it's equal with one, then I'm gonna assign uh, to this uh, transaction item, which is out transaction item. I'm gonna just create a new queue item and that should be empty. Okay, and this is just to stop the state machine and to have it working only when the transaction number is one. So for the first element. Then I'm gonna go here in the process and I'm gonna delete. I'm not dealing with the queue item, so my purpose is not to deal with any arguments from here. I'm just gonna ignore. I'll just drag and drop this get temperature and I'm gonna define a variable here for the actual temperature. Let's say temperature. Okay, I do have a spelling, but just skip that. And I'll have a message box. So let's have a message box with the actual temperature and say string the format temperature is, so I'm gonna say like that. And I hope I'm gonna find the temperature, yes. So here I have, now, I don't have any kill process, by the way. Uh, this is an empty project. My kill to process, it's empty. And also close all application, it's empty. Okay, before to run the project, actually let's change this, uh, the process. From the message box, I'm gonna just say to a log. And let's say an info, I'm gonna cut and hit paste. This is because I don't want to be blocked by a message box. So go here in the main, and let's have a look again to our get temperature. I expect to crash here, so this get text should be empty. But uh, because I have here an exception, I'm gonna just close the tab if I do have an exception and if I don't have an exception. Here it's if I don't have an exception and here if I have an exception. So let's see the actual behavior. I'm just gonna run the project. And it will open Google. And if I go here to the output, uh, I don't have any exception here, but it says temperature is, and this is an empty string. Now, even if I have set the retry to two, the reframework didn't know that it was any exception because what I did here, I swallowed the exception. So this throw has been catch here and it was not any throw further. So let's fix that. Well, I'm gonna show you how you can write a proper exception handling, which you can apply for every component. So first I'm gonna go here to the main sequence. This is, by the way, in the git component, and I'm gonna define a variable. I'll say exception, and the variable type will be of type exception. So this is from system exceptions. System exception, here it is. And I'll say something, I'm just gonna close this tab. I'm gonna delete. And let's drop an activity, uh, let's say the assign. 
So put this assign in the catch. Now what I'll do in the assign, I'm just gonna set the exception, which is here, my local variable, equal with the temporary exception. And then in the try catch, I'll just move this close. I'm gonna move it outside. So I have delete this, uh, this close tab from my exception. And I want just to have one single place to close the tab. So what I'll do, I'm just gonna put an if here, and I want to execute this close tab all the time. So basically, I should like to execute it in the finally, but we know that the finally block, it's only executed when the exception was caught. Now I have placed this if outside, but you can put it inside the finally also. So inside this if, I would like to say if the exception is not nothing, I would like to throw an exception. Okay, so I don't want to create a new exception. I would like to catch something which has been happening here in the try catch block. And I can catch it with my variable. And because of that, in the throw, I'm not gonna say a new, but instead I'll throw the existing exception. And just before to have this throw, I need to close the tab. And the way how I recommend, you can either put this close tab here in the finally, or you can put it um, actually here. So I'm just gonna put it here in the close, in the finally block. Now the way this is executed is because I do have at least one catch block. So what I'm doing here, I'm making sure that I'm catching only exceptions. I'm keeping in mind the exception. I'm going in the finally. Uh, and because I do have the exception caught, I have guaranteed that this close tab will be executed. So uh, any open browser, doesn't matter how many times I'm gonna execute this get temperature, I'm gonna open a new browser and close the actual tab. And then at the end, I'm making sure if I had an exception here in this get component, I'm gonna let it throw, okay? Because to be honest, uh, if I'm not gonna do that, you will see what kind of behavior you will get. Uh, if you're gonna have a look here, this is the temperature is and you will reach with invalid data. Don't do that. Don't ever do that. Now keep that in mind, don't ever do that. So because I cannot get the actual temperature for a certain exception, I'm just gonna let it throw. So I don't know what I can do. Now let's give another run to the robot. I'm just gonna hit run and let's see now what is the behavior. So it open is the Weber. Okay, and I'm just gonna make the UI path visible. So it seems that uh, the exception is actually thrown, is catched from here. I can see this. Now the reason I'm entering in the loop uh, actually, I'm gonna stop the robot, is because uh, I have this exception from the set transaction status. Now for the set transaction status, when it was succeeded, I had deleted this um, set to orchestrator because I don't want to set to orchestrator. So what I need to do here, in case if there is a system exception, I'm gonna delete this set transaction status. Okay, and then let's give a run to the robot. Okay, and let's make UiPath Studio visible. Okay, it's getting the first transaction item. Um, I do have a bad exception and I can see that there is a bad exception. Uh, the get temperature had an error. It was a screenshot made and I don't have any more that message. It means that I didn't reach this process. So I couldn't reach this log message. Now what I have just did, it's the way how you properly do exception handling. So I'm gonna try to make a recap. Reframer doesn't know how many times you're gonna call the get temperature. And what I did here, doesn't matter if I'm gonna open 100 new windows, this get temperature, it will be also responsible for closing the tab. So it will do the cleanup. Now this is a proper way 
how you can do exception handling. And by the way, all of your components should follow this guideline. Okay. And by the way, I don't have any Chrome open. Unfortunately, you cannot see, but keep in mind that the close all application and the kill all application, it's empty. And okay. And you may wonder, okay, Daniel, but the reframer has already some built-in functionality. Yes, you're right. But the UiPath team doesn't know what you're going to do with that project. So if you're going to open 100 tab, clean your stuff. If you don't do that, uh, how the close all application would look like? Are you going to uh, go with the four and close 100 tabs? No, uh, because keep in mind, when you have an exception, uh, kill, all kill all processes, it will not be executed, as you can see here. I think this is related to the transaction data. So what I'll do, I'm going to enter in the get transaction data and I'll modify this. If the transaction number is smaller than three, I'm going to create a new queue item. So hit run and let's see now the behavior. Open UiPath Studio. It's getting the first transaction item. It's closing. It's causing a retry. And uh, as you can see, it executed two times the get weather transaction. And when an exception occurs, it's only closing the old application and opening. This means here in the close all application, uh, you can have only the application which you expect to have it. And by the way, this should be only the application which you're gonna open here, where you're gonna have in it all application, not more. If you're gonna open new tabs, then try to clean your thing. Now, I know it was a long video, but that's the way how you do proper exception handling. Without further ado, let's catch you in the next video. Well, that was for today. I know it was a painful video, but I hope all this information was valuable for you. So a couple of takeaways. Even if you are dealing with a reframework, try to isolate exception handling per component and uh, try to do that even if you are using reframework. Don't let reframer to handle exceptions for you. I mean, um, this is already implemented, but let the reframer to handle the unknown exceptions, which are unknown for you. And like I have already said in the previously, you can define a behavior, which makes sense for you to let an exception to be thrown further. And we have seen that, that as long as you don't let the exception to pop out, the reframer doesn't know if it was an exceptions or not. So try to use this mechanism. So this is how I do exceptions handling. What do you think? Do you see any advantage, any disadvantage? Drop a comment in the YouTube section and maybe we can start a debate on this. I hope this video was helpful. And if you find it useful, hit the like button. I'm going to continue to make these videos. That was for today. I'm Daniel and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.